Hi there, I'm Michelle the Painter from Berkshire Paint and Sip, and this is Paint and Sip at Home. So today I'm going to be painting ghostly teapot and I'm sipping on some elderberry tea and if you enjoy this process I do hope that you like and subscribe to my channel and that you also check out my Patreon page where you're going to find additional painting perks. So let's get painting and let's get sipping. All right, so for my materials today, I'm gonna to be using a stretched and primed 16 by 20 inch canvas. If you're painting along with me, you can certainly switch up the size, but that's what I'll be using. I'm gonna be using acrylic paint today. My colors are titanium white, deep yellow, Mars black, burnt sienna, which I like to call rust, and burnt umber, which I like to call brown. And of course, you can switch up those colors if you'd like to. For my tools today, I have a white piece of chalk that I'll be using for some drawing. And then I have three brushes from my personal brush line, which is Michelle the Painter brushes. I have a one inch wide flat bristle brush. I have a number 10 round synthetic brush. And I have a number four round synthetic brush. And I will refer to these as small, medium, and large as we go through the painting process. And of course, you can switch those up as well if you'd like to. If you're painting along with me, you'll probably want to have a cup of water for washing your brushes as well as a paper towel for drying your brushes. And down below this video, in the video description, I will be providing you with a few additional resources that can help you throughout your painting process. One of them is a link where you could purchase the same exact paint kit that I'm using from the same size and type of the canvas to the same type of paints and brushes and all the good stuff in between. So that's there. There's also a link where you could download a free image of the final painting. So you can print that and use it as visual reference as you go through the painting process. And there's also written step-by-step -step instructions down there for you as well. And that's all we're gonna need today. All right, so what we're gonna do for the first step is we're gonna be painting our background. I'm gonna be using black, yellow, and white. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make myself, I'm gonna pre-mix myself a nice dark green color that we'll be using for the wall surface and the surface that our teapot is, is rested on. I'm gonna have my wall being dark at the top and it's gonna to go to a lighter gradient down at the bottom of the wall. And then my surface is gonna be really dark at the top and it's gonna fade down to a little bit lighter down at the bottom to give us some good perspective on the wall and the, um, and the table surface. I'm gonna be using my large brush to paint, but I'm gonna use my small brush just to uh, show you how I mixed my, pre-mixed my color. So I have my small brush here. The color that I'm going for, I have already pre-mixed so you can see where I'm headed. It's this beautiful dark green color. And how I got to that was I took a lot of my yellow and I mixed in a teeny tiny bit of black paint. So what the black paint will do is make this yellow really dark. Just add that black a teeny tiny bit at a time until you achieve the desired color. The paint, because you have black in it, will get a little bit darker as it dries. So just kind of plan for that as you're, as you're pre-mixing it. And now I'm going to take out my large brush. I'm going to pick up some of that pre-mixed green that I have. I'm going to make myself two markers down uh, about two thirds of the way down my canvas. So to know where that is, if you kind of eyeball your halfway point, which for me is right about here, I'm gonna go about halfway between here and the bottom of my canvas, which is about here, and it's somewhere in the middle of there. So for me, somewhere in this vicinity. Then I can just use my brush as a measuring tool to see where I put that marker, and then come over to the other side and give myself a marker at about the same height. These are just stopping points for me or markers to stop me from painting farther than that. So now I'm gonna pick up more of my custom green and I'm gonna start up at the top of my canvas and I'm gonna be applying it in a left to right brush stroke. I know that because I am using such a dark color on such a light base 
that I may end up with quite a bit of streakiness throughout um, my application here. So for me, I am going to be doing a second coat on this. Right now, I'm just applying it in kind of a thinner type of a layer, but also knowing that I'm gonna be doing a second coat, I am okay with a little bit of streakiness in it. I'm gonna bring it down a little bit farther than here, and then I'm gonna start introducing a bit of white into the equation. So I'm gonna go a little bit farther, maybe about halfway down your canvas, or a little bit farther than halfway down. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pick up my uh, green plus white on my brush and I'm going to create a lighter version of this down at the bottom of the wall. Now, without washing my brush, I'm just picking up white paint to finish out the bottom of this wall. So I'm bringing it right down to where my markers are and I just give it a, a nice long brush stroke across which allows me to have to give it a pretty straight line. I don't need it to be a perfectly straight line because I know that I'm gonna be attempting to do an out of focus type of transition from my wall to my um, surface that my pot is sitting on. But if you wanted yours to be nice and smooth, you certainly could do that. I'm just gonna do this for a little bit of blending before I move on to the table surface. And again, I know I'm gonna do a second coat, which is gonna be exactly the same as this. So this uh, process. So if I don't get my blend perfect on this um, first time, when I go to do the second coat, it'll smooth it out a little bit more. And I just go back and forth to kind of level out my paint. I am gonna wash my brush right now so I can tackle the, um, the surface down below. So I'm washing and drying my brush. And what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna pick up just black paint and I'm gonna create the, um, the transition from the the surface to the wall. I'm gonna go across like this and I am going to bump it into that line that I just created for the wall so I can have a nice soft transition or out of focus type of look as they both are meeting. So I'm just putting my brush in this direction and going back and forth right over those two um, sections. And this is allowing for them to have a soft blend to them without um, without dragging it too high or too low. Then I'm gonna pick back up a little bit more black so I can come a little bit further down with this black. I'm not gonna um, have too much paint on my brush because in a second I'm gonna start picking up that green paint. So this is looking pretty good. Now without washing my brush, I'm gonna pick up my green. So I have my green on my dirty brush and then I'm just gonna be picking up green for the rest of this surface. So it's gonna get you know, lighter as it comes down towards the bottom, but it's not gonna be as light as that. This is just providing me with a little bit of um, dimension on my table surface. And then once I've got this done, I will let it dry and I am going to do a second coat on it. And then when we come back, oh, you don't have to watch me do the second coat because it's the same as the first. And then what I'm gonna do for the uh, following step is I'm going to be using my piece of chalk. So once you get your wall and your surface done, you can put your large brush away, take out your piece of chalk and get ready for the next step. All right, so what we're gonna do for the next step is we're gonna be drawing an outline for our teapot. I'm gonna be using my piece of chalk to do my drawing, but you could certainly use any utensil that you would like. I do recommend that before you start this step that you make sure your canvas is dry. So this is that time where you get to take an extra long break if you'd like to. Or you can find some kind of fun fanning method to get it dry. Or you can do as I did and just whip out a blow dryer and get it dry that way. So what I'm gonna be doing is I'm gonna be guiding you through a series of markers in order to make a nice generic type of shape teapot. You could certainly alter this to be whatever shape that you would like. You could put cups on the side or saucers or a little sugar container, whatever you would like. I'm gonna be using my chalk to draw. I'm gonna be using my medium brush as a measuring tool so I can get my pot to be pretty symmetrical. What I'm gonna first do is I'm gonna make myself a marker at, uh, I'm gonna find myself about the center of the top of my canvas. I'm gonna come over to the right from that about two inches, and then I'm gonna be coming down to, I would say, right about maybe the six inches, six, six and a half inches from the top of my canvas, so somewhere in through here. Then what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna take out my medium brush and see how far away from the edge of my canvas I made that marker. 
So I can just hold my brush up like this. I can hold my brush at the edge and then just slide it down until I'm about maybe two inches from the bottom of my canvas, make myself another marker. I'm gonna connect these two markers with a vertical line and I don't need this line to be super duper straight. I'm just using it kind of as a guide to make my object pretty symmetrical. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come about two inches to the left of this marker, make myself a dot, and two inches to the right, make myself another dot. And if you wanted to make sure that these were symmetrical, you can use your fancy measuring tool and just go like that and like that just to make sure that they're pretty even. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come down from the top of here, I would say about three to three and a half inches, and then I'm gonna go out to the left about maybe two and a half to three inches, make myself a dot, and then I'm gonna use my fancy measuring tool <laughs> to see how far I did it on the left side and then I go ahead and I do another one on the right side, so somewhere in this vicinity. What I've just done is made myself the top two corners of my teapot and the bottom two corners of my teapot. Now, and this is gonna be like where I have my topper. So now I'm just gonna kind of connect my dots. What I'm gonna do is I'm going to make myself an oval shape connecting these two dots. So I'm just gonna bring this down a little bit, cross it over, bring it around like this. And I don't want my oval to be too, too tall. So I'm just gonna make it maybe, you know, an inch and a half tall, maybe something like that. And again, doesn't have to be perfect. I'm gonna do a little topper um, on top of my pot to open it. So I'm just gonna take this in about maybe a half of an inch to an inch and give myself a little bit of a dome type of a shape in through here. And again, if you want it, to make sure that it's symmetrical, you just kind of keep measuring from that center line. Did I do this one the same distance from the center as I did that one? And that's how I keep it symmetrical. On the top, I'm just gonna give myself a little um, little handle or little thumb you know, holder thing, <laughs> a little topper like that. And then I'm gonna connect these two to here. This is where you can really get nice and creative. I'm gonna have mine kind of in an hourglass type of shape. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take it from here and I'm gonna just bring it in just a little bit and then bump it out in a kind of a rounded type of a way and bring it right down to my marker. Now the trick is to get it the same on the other side, which if it's not perfect, it's okay. You can certainly, um, you know, have it a, a little imperfect if you want to, or you can even make it like it's a handcrafted type of a pot, which wouldn't necessarily be 100% symmetrical. But what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna give myself a better shot by making a couple markers on the right-hand side. So again, I've got my fancy tool. I can see I have a vertical or a horizontal line right here that I can work from. So I'm gonna just kind of, oh, it by chance marks on that blue marker right through there. And then I just go over to the right-hand side and make myself a marker right about that same distance. And you can do that as many times as you want. If I wanna do it in through here, I just find myself my marker and then I just, or you know, my distance, and then I just come to the right side of it and make myself another marker in through here. And you could do, you know, 10 down that side if you want to, but giving yourself a couple of markers at the same distance as that other side will help you to get it a little bit more symmetrical. And then I'm gonna just um, connect my dots. I've got this one in through here. I know I've gotta bump this out to me in through here and then curve it back to me down in through here. And then I'm gonna give myself a horizontal line at the bottom, which looks a little crooked, <laughs> but that's okay. We'll straighten it when I paint it. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna just do a nice freestyle type of handle. I'm gonna have mine, and I you don't even need to get the full width of the handle. I'm just gonna kind of mark off where I want it. I'm just gonna have it kind of over here and then wrapping around like that. And then I need my spout. I'm gonna have my spout over on this side. I'm gonna uh, start at the top of where it meets the pot is right about here. And then the bottom I'm gonna have pretty far down, probably somewhere in, in this vicinity. I think I want this to bubble out just a little bit more. There we go. Um, and then I'm going to have my tip of my spout somewhere in here. So I can connect here to here with a rounded edge. And then here I'm gonna have this kind of 
bumping out a little bit, bring it back in and just meet it in through there. And then of course you can do any little adjustments that you want. We're gonna be using our medium brush for the next step. So you can put your chalk away, take out your medium brush and get ready for the next step. All right, so what we're gonna do for the next step is we're gonna be painting the base coat for the teapot and its reflection. I'm gonna be using my medium brush and the only color I'm gonna be using is Burnt Sienna. I'm choosing to use Burnt Sienna because it's a great base for a metallic type of look that I'm going for. When I do this, I'm not gonna be doing anything fancy. I am also going to be painting over all of these guidelines because we'll be able to put them back in in a little while. I know that um, the process that we're gonna be using for painting the um, objects on later is going to allow us to recreate those um, lines. This is just a, let's get the base coat on here, nothing fancy. I'm just bringing it right to the edge of my chalk. You may even, in some spots, see your chalk behind your paint. So the paint that I like to use is a very transparent paint. Uh, it's a student grade thin body paint and a lot of times I will be able to see stuff underneath it. So like in some areas, that I'm going through right now, I'm going to be able to, I might, I might be able to see some of that chalk underneath, which I'm okay with. I mean, I'm no, no harm, no foul. I'm actually going to be doing, um, most likely a second coat of this burnt sienna anyways, just to provide me with a nice base to it. So as you're going through the process, like I did on my background, I did two coats of, um, my background color just to give me a nice coverage. I will do the same thing when it comes to this burnt sienna. So if you do have colors that you know are transparent and if you're looking for a nice solid coat, you can certainly just do two passes with it. So I like to, I'll be putting it on and then I will let it dry and then I will just come back and do a second coat to it. So I'm gonna just bring this right in through here. I'm gonna bring it right up to my chalk mark on this side. I do slow down on my edges, but it doesn't, at this point, the, the brush stroke isn't entirely important, but I am trying to concentrate on not leaving any really thick spots. So what that means, if, if I leave paint that is very thick, I, I will have lumps and bumps within the painting. So I know what, that I want this particular object that I am painting to look pretty smooth. I might make it look antique -y and a little bit weathered, but as far as the paint texture goes, I, I, I'm going for a nice smooth look to it. So I'm making a conscious effort to have my paint pretty level. So like in through here, I see that this is thick and that would make a, a bump in my paint in my painting. So I just make sure that I kind of level that out. I'd rather do two coats of paint um, on something like this in order to get a nice flat surface for my paint than to try and get all that paint on a in a thick way on one coat and run the risk of having those thick spots that I am not certain I, that I don't want to have on this specific painting. Some paintings I don't mind if there's texture in in the um, in the paint, but on this particular one, because I am doing a surface of a smooth object, I'm paying a little bit more attention to that thickness. So again, I will do a second coat, which will um, take care of any transparency but on this first coat, and I'll do, the second coat will be nice and thin as well, but on this first coat, I'm just being mindful of my thick spots. And then as I get towards this edge, again, if you still have, you know, a little bit of your chalk showing, will it, that will eventually disappear with um, additional paint layers, and or you could take and with a little bit of water and get rid of that residue. For my handle in through here, I'm just gonna kind of ride along my my chalk again you could really be as creative as you want as far as the design elements to this you could have your handle having a little thumb um, piece that a, a lot of teapot handles tend to have you could have yours with even more ornate type of scroll work 
really the sky's the limit when it comes to designing the elements on your teapot. You can uh, make painted decorations as if somebody hand painted your teapot. You could do, you know, a purple teapot, whatever you want. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to do the, ref uh, the base coat to the reflection as well. All I need to do for the reflection is take it from these bottom two corners and just bring it out in kind of a diagonal curved way. And I'm going to do the same thing over on this side, just a diagonal kind of curved way, bringing it pretty far out. The reflection can be pretty skewed. And then I'm just going to rub on this burnt sienna in through here. It can even be a little um, transparent in your reflection because that would could take on some of the appearance of that surface as well. I'm going to leave a little gap between my reflection and my the bottom of my teapot also. And then I'm going to let it dry and do a second coat on the pot itself. And then we are going to be using uh, this same brush for the next step so you can wash it and dry it and get ready. All right, so what we're gonna do for the next step is we're gonna do the second layer or the second step to our teapot. I do, again, recommend that you've got your, um, your teapot dry at this point because this will be much easier if it's dry. So what this step is gonna consist of is we're gonna be adding shadows on the pot in strategic areas to start to tell the story about the shape or the form of this object. So the, I want the object to look rounded, especially in this center belly area. So I'm gonna be putting a shadow on this bottom kind of right hand side and getting it to blend in with this main color. I'll put a little shadow in between the main body and the spout, so somewhere in through here. I'll put little shadows on the bottom side of the handle. I'm also gonna put a shadow in the area where this topper kind of sits inside the pot itself. And I'll put a little shadow on the, the edge here. I'm also gonna be um, starting the metallic color process of the pot itself. So I'm going to be custom making a gold type of color that will be incorporated We'll do the shadow and then we'll blend it into this beautiful golden color. So I'm going to be using black, burnt sienna, uh, yellow, brown, and maybe a little bit of white. So all my colors, I guess, <laughs> except for that dark green. So what I'm going to first do is I'm going to pre-mix myself my golden color which I have magically done. <laughs> I'll show you how I got there. So this is the color right here. How I got to this color was I used quite a bit of my yellow and then I added brown to it because whenever I think of gold as a color or like brass, I always think that it's a yellowy brownish type of a color. So all I need to do is take my yellow and add brown to it and it's gonna create this metallic gold type of color. You can certainly, if you have metallic paint, you can use metallic paint, but this is a great way to give you the illusion of a metallic type of surface by incorporating this type of color in layers upon other type of colors. So this will represent like a brass type of a look with this golden um, type of sheen on top of it, which might resemble brass of sorts. So that's gonna be my, my golden color. I'm gonna wash my brush right now. I just wanted to have it ready so when I go to do um, the blending process, I don't have to stop and mix paint. I washed and dried my brush. I'm gonna start with a little bit of black paint on my brush, and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna separate out my topper from my pot. I'm gonna be creating a, a shadowy area in through here. So I'm gonna take, I'm gonna leave a little bit of the burnt sienna as the edge of my, um, of my pot. So I'm gonna just take it in from here and then just give myself this curved type of line. You could certainly use a smaller brush for this if you want to, but I'm just gonna work with this brush. I don't need to really do anything in here, but from here I'm gonna give myself this dark little corner. So I just kind of came down straight down from that, the um, this little corner in through here and just 
gave myself a dark little area right in through here. So that'll separate that topper out from here. I'm gonna reload with a tiny bit more black paint on my brush to give myself a little shadow on this right hand side. The trick here to making these shadows or darker areas, you have a dark surface behind here. So you don't necessarily wanna bring this black all the way to the edge. You can leave a little hint of that um, burnt sienna along the edge. That'll make it look like the vessel has kind of a, a glow around it. So I'm gonna take this a little bit away from the edge and just bring it down into here a little bit. This is gonna give me um, this just little decorative handle type of a piece. Now I'm gonna wipe my brush off and I'm gonna pick up a tiny bit of burnt sienna just to get that black to blend in just a little bit in this area in through here. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna move down towards the um, rest of, well actually let me hit my shadow on my, my handle first. So picking up a tiny bit of black paint, I'm just gonna kind of ride the underside of um, here. I know that the surface behind it is a little bit lighter so I can get away with just kind of giving this a dark outline around the bottom here. I'm gonna put just a little bit in through here you can always put a tiny bit of moisture on your brush. I just picked up a little bit of water. Oops, I'm going outside my lines there. Put more paint on my brush so I can clean up that edge. There we go, that works for me. And then um, I'm gonna put a little bit on this bottom side right in through here. And I'm gonna be doing some highlights and all kinds of other fun stuff. So this is just adding that shadow in through there. Now I'm gonna put a big shadow on the bottom side in through here. I'm gonna pick up black paint and I'm gonna apply it, but then I'm going to, um, again, I'm gonna leave a tiny bit of this burnt sienna over here on the edge, and I'm gonna blend this into more burnt sienna. So just as I, as I go to do this, because I, I like to kind of do it on the faster side so I can kind of rub it in as I go, I like to use the edge or the side of my brush to give me this almost scrubbing type of technique to blend. Right now I'm gonna pick up Burnt Sienna on my dirty brush in order to get these two colors to, to blend in. So I do it kind of on the faster side in order to um, keep that paint open. I just keep picking up Burnt Sienna at this point to get it to, to blend in. If I was using a firmer brush, like a bristle brush, I could certainly get away with going a little bit slower because the, the firmness of a bristle brush is gonna allow you to keep moving that paint. But because I'm using a softer brush today for this process, I did need to kind of scrub it in an expedited way. And that's why I picked up that burnt sienna pretty quickly so I could get those two colors to blend as they were drying. And you can see I've got my um, little hue of that burnt sienna along the edge. I'm gonna do a, a shadow in through here. So I'm gonna put a little bit of black on my brush. So this is gonna be um, separating the, the pot itself from the spout. So something like this. And again, just leaving a little hint of that um, burnt sienna along the edge. Now I'm wiping my brush off, picking up a little bit more of the burnt sienna just to get these two to blend up into that edge of the spout, something like that. That works out pretty well for me. I am gonna put a tiny bit in the reflection as well, just so I can keep this um, reflection going in an, easy, in an easy way, whatever you do up top. If you wanna hit the bottom reflection at the same time, that's fine. Or you could do the reflection later. That's whatever, whatever works for you. And then just blend it in a little bit. So I've got the dark areas on. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna incorporate that golden color that we had. So I'm gonna pick up burnt sienna and the gold that we have, and I'm gonna put a, a, a good area of it in through here, gonna get it to just kind of blend in with that burnt sienna. Now I'm kind of just using a circular type of rubbing technique to give myself um, this nice kind of, uh, almost like a weathered metallic type of look to it. I'm going to pick up uh, more of the gold color as I come up towards this left-hand side. So I did not pick up any more burnt sienna. And this is just gonna overlap on top of my uh, burnt sienna. And you're gonna still be able to see the burnt sienna underneath it. This is just providing us with, the, um, with a nice 
sheen to our to our vessel and you can put it as many places as you want I'm gonna put it up here along this rim as well you can you know if you're digging the burnt sienna and the gold is a little overpowering for you you can certainly use them in conjunction with one another I do know that this is I have not incorporated white in my color yet so this is going to be transparent when it dries you're going to be able to see more of the colors that are underneath it so it's in essence just adding like a glaze or a a layer of another color on top of that burnt sienna without uh, taking away the color of the burnt sienna so it's adding a special effect to it i'm going to do the same thing up here so i've got my my gold on my brush i'm going to put it pretty heavy on this left hand side and then i think i'm just going to kind of rub it out towards the right and we will be doing some highlights and stuff on this later this is just again speaking to the the metallic nature that I wanted to put on here. I'm gonna do the same thing up and through here. I got some chalk that I wanna take care of as well. So we'll take care of some of that right now. And then I'm gonna do the same thing over on my handle and my spout. So right now I'm just picking up the, the gold and putting it pretty heavy where I want it maybe the brightest. And then I'm just kind of fading it out into the base coat of the burnt sienna. If yours becomes all one solid color, that's that's fine. That will work. You again. You'll still see that burnt sienna underneath it. This is just the um, just a layer to to work upon. I'm gonna put some on my on my spout in through here. So again, I'm just kind of starting. We're gonna put a little dark area in there when we do the details, but I figured it was too small of an area. <laughs> I just wanted to tackle this right now, and we'll put a little dark area inside of our spout later. And that's looking pretty good. And then I'm just gonna go and again, uh, carry it into my into my um, reflection. So a little bit of that gold down at the bottom of my reflection and just kind of blend it in. And then we're gonna be using the same brush for the next step. So once you've got this layer done, you can wash and dry this medium brush and get ready for the next step. All right, so what we're gonna do for the next step is the third step <laughs> to the teapot. So this is gonna be with the medium brush. I'm gonna be using primarily my gold and white, but if I need to go into my burnt sienna or maybe a little yellow, I certainly will. And I'll let you know when I do, if I do. What I'm gonna be doing is I'm going to be adding, in essence, most of the highlights, not the final detail twinkle highlights, but definitely the highlights that are gonna tell the, the full shape of the of this object, how the lip is gonna pop out a little bit more, how this is gonna have a nice roundness, and um, the, the shape of our spout, and a little bit of highlight up here. It's adding to the metallic look to it, and it's also adding to all the form. I'm gonna start with burnt sienna and white, about equal parts on my brush of both colors. I know I want this area in through here to really pop out and be the biggest, but I want my left hand side to be the lightest. We put our shadow over here, so we'll put our highlight on the left. I, in my head, my ghost is my light source, so I'm gonna have this kind of upper left hand region as my highlight. So I'm gonna start in through here, right about in through here, and then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna rub this brightness into this big center kind of bulbous area of the um, pot. I'm gonna bring this right to the edge. I don't need it to be all the way white right now. What I'm really looking to do is just give myself this area that pops out. I'm gonna pick up more of my gold color on my dirty brush as I'm blending this out towards this right hand side. And again, I'm just using this circular type of brush stroke. I do need more paint on my brush because I'm running out. Um, you could certainly, if this circular brush stroke and this type of brush wasn't working for you, you could certainly switch to like a bristle brush will help you to get this um, gradated type of um, overlapping blend. But I'm just using this brush with this and I'm using the side of my brush. I'm putting a tiny bit more white on my on my brush right now. And the trick to this is just to try not to overdo it. If you need to do more layers, great. But if you sit here and scrub it too hard, 
all at once while it's trying to dry. You might kind of pop a little hole in the um, color of the of the paint. So if I feel like I'm scrubbing too hard, like in through here, I'm going to back off for a minute, let that dry and go work somewhere else and come back and put another layer if I want to. So I picked up again some more gold and my white. I'm going to tackle uh, this area up in through here. So this is gold and white. And I don't want it to go all the way white at this point because I am going to be adding a, like a sparkle highlight onto it in a little while. So as I'm going through this process, I'm just cautious about not going too, too white, which is why I always am gonna have that gold on my brush at the same time. And you could certainly, if this wasn't spreading well enough for you, you could add a little bit of water to your brush if you wanted to. That will uh, keep the paint open a little bit longer, but I'm just kind of allowing for it to um, just kind of uh, dissipate throughout the, um, throughout that surface. I'm gonna put a little bit more over in through here so I can have the roundness of this top with that gold type of a color. That's looking pretty good. And I'm just fading it out into the um, burnt sienna. If you wanted to, you could certainly add more burnt sienna. Wherever your, your visual preference is, for me on this one, I want this kind of center area to be probably the lightest that will tell the viewer that it's popping out the most. I'm gonna put a little bit of this gold and white up on this um, little top piece. And when you get to a smaller area like this top piece, if if this brush is too big, you could certainly switch to your um, to your smaller brush to get this done. And of course you can shape this in whatever way that you want. I'm just going for a nice kind of generic type of shape in through here, but you could make yours round, you could make it square, whatever works for you. I'm gonna put a little bit on the um, rim here. And right now I'm just kind of alternating between the uh, gold and white to get these, uh, to get this shine of sorts onto my, I gotta, I gotta not talk when I'm doing this curve right here, <laughs> onto the surface of my teapot in through here, just gonna bring this around the edge, and then I'm just gonna kind of fade this down. I'm gonna make it a little bit darker in through here to uh, allow for the viewer to understand that, that, that the pot dips in a little bit in that vicinity. That's gonna give you, again, the, uh, the information on the shape or the form of the of the object so if I if I make it brighter up towards this rim make it a little bit darker in through here and then make it even more bright here that tells the viewer that it dips in right in through there so that's just little little tricks that you can play with to explain to the viewer what's happening with that object I'm going to put another light layer on this in a minute but I'm going to wait for it to dry just a little bit more before I tackle that I'm going to go over to here with my gold and white and give myself the um, the little start of the edge of my spout in through here and again you can make yours as bright as you want so or maybe you want yours to be more of like a silver type of a look and instead of the the gold you use uh, either blue and black and white or black and white give yourself a nice silver tone on top of this that would be a cool decision to make um, I just keep I'm picking up more of my gold right now to put a little bit more in through here so again I'm alternating between the gold and the white in various um, intensities in order to get this to to shine the way that I want it to and again if I felt that I I want I might want to do another layer on it after I'm done but right now I'm just kind of kind of getting these nice shiny areas in here I want this to show as if it's got some nice gold up in through there so I'm just kind of using that gold and white maybe I've got a nice streak of it down the side in through here and again you could use a smaller brush and on stuff like this when you're when you're working with you know, I'm emulating a shiny object. Maybe you want yours not to be shiny. Maybe you want yours to be more of like a ceramic type of an object that maybe doesn't have a glossy finish, or maybe it does. You know, if you're if you're thinking that you want it to be shiny, the contrast from the dark to the light 
is more important. If you want it to be more of a flat object, then you don't maybe necessarily need to have as much contrast as I'm going for. I'm gonna, I just, I'm gonna elevate this area a little bit more. I just picked up more um, white and gold. I want this area to be pretty darn light in through here. And so I, I just am elevating it with another, another layer. That's now I just picked up more of my gold. And again, you could certainly work with your burnt sienna as much as you want. I'm going to also elevate the lightness in my, um, in my reflection. And we're going to be putting some, some little fine tuned details. And when you're doing this again, you know, being mindful of blending it with a neighboring section. So I can just sit here and kind of rub these colors and overlap it if I needed to pick up a little bit more of my um, burnt sienna as I'm going towards the darker area I certainly would do that as a matter of fact I think I'm gonna no, I'm gonna pick up more of my gold as I'm going I know that my gold will be nice and transparent and will work as a nice additional layer and blending agent and then I'm gonna put a little bit in my um, in my reflection that's looking pretty good maybe a touch more up in through here and again, I will have fine-tuned details in a minute, but just making sure that looks the way that I want. So a little bit of gold and a touch of uh, white for this little uh, bottom portion of my reflection. Just gonna make move my canvas so I can see it. And so you can too. And then once we've got this done, we're gonna be switching to our small brush for the next step. So you can put this medium brush away take out your small brush and get ready for the next step. All right, so what we're gonna do for the next step is the fourth step <laughs> to the teapot. So I'm gonna use my small brush. This is just gonna be the fine tuned little details that I couldn't get to with my medium brush. So this will be that extra bright little super shine on the surface of it and any little tweaking that I feel that is necessary. I'm going to use my small brush. I'm going to be using mostly white. I'll probably tap into maybe a little bit of my gold. And if I need to go into any other colors, I will let you know. I'm going to start with a little bit of white on my brush. For me, what I'm doing is I'm, I'm looking to just add that last bit of shine. So uh, uh, in a lot of my paintings, when I'm doing, um, building this um, these type of objects that have sheen or reflections on them I usually will wait until last to put that brightest of bright spot with white so you notice I didn't use just white in the whole thing yet now's the time I'm gonna I'm gonna pull it out so I'm gonna start up at the top with my little topper in through here and I'm gonna give myself this real bright little shine up at the top and what this does is because I didn't break out the white too soon, this makes it look even shinier. <laughs> so if, if I had broke out the white a little bit too soon, then I wouldn't be able to get this appearance of, um, of the shine because I wouldn't, have, I wouldn't be able to go any lighter than white. So maybe I'll add a little extra reflection here. And reflections like this can be made by anything. So maybe the ghost is making a little reflection. Maybe there's a light in the room that's making a reflection, uh, this, uh, this bright shine. So you can imagine it in whatever way. You can imagine it to have whatever intensity. It can be, you know, again, from a, from a, a light source or an object. I'm going to just bring a nice bright piece over there. Maybe I, and it takes on the shape of the object itself. So maybe I've got a nice, bright area in through here that gets pulled down in this direction to take on the shape of the um, of the pot of the teapot so something like that uh, let's see I want a little bit on the top of this handle in through here so I'm gonna stick some up in through here and then maybe just get that top edge of it to be super shiny. I think I picked up a little bit of gold, which was fine, <laughs> unexpected, but fine. I just re-picked up a little bit of white to get that brightness in through there. And this maybe just kind of wraps around the edge there. I think I want this edge over here to be a little bit lighter. So I am picking up gold on my dirty brush. I feel like I want this to have a little bit more identity over in through here. So these are the decisions I, I have to make as I'm finishing up 
my my piece if I feel that an edge is not um, being displayed enough or I feel I need to intensify something, now's the time I do it. I just kind of go over the whole thing and say, okay, what's missing? Where do I want a little extra pop? So I want maybe a little extra pop on the tip of this handle in through here to draw the eye over in that direction. Maybe this gets a little extra something over in through here and I just fiddle this is my this is my time to fiddle and make any adjustments I want I'm picking up a little bit of gold seems like right now I am kind of flipping back and forth between my white and my gold if you wanted the gold to look even brighter you can put a white spot and then put the gold right on top of it that'll make it look make the gold itself look more yellow I'm going to put a couple of streaks down this left hand side so I just picked up white on my dirty brush I'm going to pull down just a, a nice highlight down the edge in through here and something like this even though I'm not doing a whole heck of a lot is really kind of ident you know helping to identify the edge of this particular object it's helping to tell the story of a light source it tells all kinds of good stuff I'm going to put a little bit on the edge of my spout in through here and maybe pull this down this top edge like this and now I'm picking up more of my gold so I can get it to to blend down just a little bit I don't necessarily need it to blend down because it is a reflection which can have clean kind of geometric edges to it but I felt I wanted to so I did I just picked up a little bit more of my white I feel like I want some kind of bright reflection down this it down this edge in through here and then I definitely want something in through here too I'm thinking that maybe we just make this like it's a reflection of the ghost or something <laughs> maybe a nice bright kind of shape circular kind of shape in through here taking on the the shape of my of the ghost and maybe let's just pull this down this way something like this maybe we'll just fade it down into here yeah that looks fun something like that and then if you felt that you wanted any more for any reason you can certainly add you know more shadows or more highlights or if you felt like like I feel I'm picking up a bit of black paint I feel like maybe I need a little shadow underneath my underneath my pot so just a little tiny bit of black paint to break up that reflection with the with the pot showing that maybe there's a little shadow before the reflection starts so little little things like that or cleaning up any little chalk mark that I feel um, is still evident and unnecessary and then I would just you know let it dry see if there's any other little tweaks that I want to, oh I need a little dark spot in my my spout I just picked up a tiny bit of black I'm gonna put a little bit of black inside um, the opening of my spout because that's where the steam is going to escape <laughs> the steam slash ghost is going to escape so that I definitely need that and then if you want to do anything else feel free to do so we're going to be using our medium brush for the next step so you can put this small brush away take out your medium brush and get ready for the next step all right so what we're going to do for the next step is we're going to paint a ghost I'm going to be using my medium brush. I'm going to be using black and white. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to be making a gray ghost first, and then I'm going to put some little white accents on it. I want my ghost to appear as if it is emerging from the steam from my teapot. So I want all of this to look like steam, which would be transparent, which is where I'm going to use the gray. The gray is going to help it not look so much like um, the the ultimate white it's going to give it that depth and layers to the smoky steaminess of it so I'm going to start with gray I'm also going to be using water within the mixture so that way you'll be able to see through it and it'll be transparent so I'm going to pre-mix myself a gray color I'm going to take a tiny bit of black and white paint and just mix it together I want it to kind of be a medium type of gray not too light not too dark somewhere in this vicinity well maybe a little bit lighter I will be using white as an accent in a little bit but this is just going to kind of get me started once I have this color I do want to 
make it thin with water. So I'm just going to pick up a little bit of water on my brush and thin it out so it's nice and fluid. And then what I'm going to do, I don't want to have a lot of paint in my bristles, so I'm going to actually wash and dry my brush right now because I used this for, for mixing, so I know I have a lot of paint in there. So I'm going to wash and dry it, and then I'm going to pick up some of my watered down gray paint. And you can always add extra water to your brush as you go through the process. So now I just have a very little bit of gray plus a good amount of water in my brush. And now I'm just going to kind of start to explore what's going to happen as I bring this steam out of my um, out of my pot. So I can bring this in in whatever kind of way that I want. I feel like I have too much paint on my brush right now. So I'm going to um, put more water on my brush and take some of the paint off. So that way I can, yeah, now, we, now we're going. So I'm gonna just bring it out like this. I do, again, want to have transparency to my paint. So that's why I, do, I added more water to it. I'm gonna have it kind of coming down in this vicinity. And if I wanted there to be more transparency, I would just keep adding more water to my brush. I can put as many layers of, um, of steam as I want. Um, it's always easier to kind of add to it than it is to take away from it. So that's why I'm just going to kind of proceed slowly. I want my ghost to kind of come up in this uh, vicinity, up in through here. So I wanted it to kind of travel out of here and then we'll just kind of go up in this vicinity. Again, I'm using my gray plus a good amount of water on my brush right now. I'm going to have it kind of coming in this vicinity over like this maybe so just giving myself kind of an outline of sorts i want my mouth so i'm going to give myself kind of an opening for my mouth i'm going to have a couple of eyes in through here so a couple of openings for my eyes and now i can just kind of have free freestyle um kind of building it i'm putting a little bit more gray on my brush right now to give the top of my ghost a little bit more substance in through here so i picked up just a little bit more of that gray and um I'm creating a head <laughs> of sorts, something in this vicinity with a little bit more substance to it than the actual steam um, that was coming out of the, of the pot. And I want everything to look like it's kind of flowing together. So now that I've kind of established where I want it now, I, I can kind of be a little bit more freer with my brush strokes, getting everything to just look like it is flowing together and creating its own um, trajectory of sorts from that's going to create my my ghost and I'm just having fun now just making sure that movement looks the way that I want it to again I'm still just using my gray right now with with water on my brush maybe we've got some ghost hair of sorts or ghost steam coming out of uh, uh, this direction. I do want it to look like it's got a lot of movement to it so I'm going to continue to add some um, maybe some steam coming in this direction. Maybe this kind of just trails off like that and again because I'm I'm using this gray with water on my brush it's allowing me to get these beautiful layering effects of the steam as if some of the steam is moving in front of other parts it's allowing it to look really um, nice and natural I guess if you, if you want to call it that maybe I'm going to bring I think I'm going to bring some even down in through this vicinity so I can bring some down coming you know flowing in this direction this is also a great um, element to a painting if there's stuff that maybe you did and you want to hide something. You can certainly use your steam in order to, you know, disguise an element of your painting that didn't come out exactly as you had wanted it to. I'm um, putting some a little bit heavier down in through here just to, again, give myself a little bit more of the, the movement. I am going to add some more um, lighter version in a minute but again right now just kind of getting the the gist of this where I want before I start adding um, white and I can keep just adding these layers of this gray too the more layers I add 
the less transparent it's gonna be. So if I'm going through this and, and I want this head to look a little bit more solid, I can just put a, another layer on top of it. If I want you know, to make sure that these eyes are you know, popping out really well, just put a little bit more of the gray around them so, they, so that blackness of them kind of sinks in and they become more, more prominent or dominant. And then if you want some of the steam to pop out a little bit more, again, just additional layers of this gray. I have not um, picked up any, any white at this point, just I'm still working with that gray, allowing for myself to have some um, more prominent pieces of, of steams and some more subtle pieces. So just allowing for that diversity in the, um, in the makeup of it and of the intensity of it. So I'm thinking that that's pretty good, maybe a little bit, I think I need to make myself a little more gray. <laughs> I don't think I made myself enough. So I'm making myself just a little more gray on the fly here. Um, making sure I got my right color. There we go, a little bit of water on my brush. I felt like I, I want just a little bit more in through here before I start um, adding the white. I just wanna make sure that I've got enough of everything that I was hoping for in the shape of my ghost. And then, cause the white is gonna be where I kind of finalize it. So I just wanna make sure that everything is in place and this is looking pretty good now that I've got that on there. So now I'm gonna pick up white plus water. So this is where I'm gonna have the, um, the firmer pieces of um, steam kind of billowing out they're going to draw the attention, the, the eye a little bit more. Again, I don't need it to be a real solid color, so I am using it with water on my brush. So that way it becomes just a, an accent. It allows for certain areas to draw the viewer's attention. It allows for it to look like there's more depth in that steam and you know, because I'm using it with water on my brush also, it might look a little bit brighter when it's wet than it does when it dries. So as you're going through this process, if it dries a little bit darker than you expected, you can certainly just add another layer to it. I am gonna add fun eyebrows in a second because <laughs> all ghosts need to have eyebrows. I'm gonna add them so, they, so it gives my ghost a, a cute little expression. So I'm just gonna use a tiny bit of white and I'm gonna put these really cute, just little quick eyebrows <laughs> up in here. So you can, you know, those clearly are not necessary, but if you wanted to add some extra expression to your little ghost, maybe a little highlight over on this side of the mouth or around the eyes, you know, wherever you feel that you want that expression or the um, intensity of the of the ghost to appear, just make it a little bit brighter. If you you know need this side to be more evident, just add a little bit more of that of that color, and you can keep manipulating the intensity with the with the brightness of the white um, and the gray. Maybe just a little bit more down in through here. I'm picking up some of my gray just to maybe get a little bit more. Maybe actually white and water. I just want this to show up just a little bit more in through here so we don't lose the idea that we've got a little bit of steam down in through here. And then I would just fiddle with it. So I would let mine dry. And if there's any um, more that I want to do on my steam, I certainly would, or on my ghost, I certainly would. And then we're gonna be using our small brush for the next step. So once you've got this adorable <laughs> teapot ghost done, you can, Put this medium brush away, take out your small brush, and get ready for the next step. All right, so we are onto the final step. This is the final step of every painting, which is to sign it. I typically sign mine in the bottom left or the bottom right. I'm gonna be using my small brush and I'm gonna be using my gray paint. I like to sign mine with my initials, but you could certainly sign yours with your first name or the date or a symbol or whatever you'd like for your identifying mark to be is completely fine because it's your painting and you get to sign it however you would like. And that's gonna conclude this painting. I hope you enjoyed the process. I hope you painted yourself a very fun, spirited, spirited little teapot and I look forward to painting and sipping with you again sometime.